zone restrictions and stuff like that, um, which is ported to Linux. So it, it works through uh, OpenZFS, um, temporary file system, read only. And there's there's three different pages of uh, different featured ZFS. So uh, there's a lot to leverage with ZFS. Um, ZFS is very difficult to start because you need to recompile the kernel and the kernel model. So I don't know who here has recompiled, recompiled the Linux kernel. Okay, we got a couple of people here. Um, is not an easy task for beginners. So like I said, if you want to contact me directly, I can walk you through that um, through my Telegram handle. So more features here we have. Uh, SHA 256, so checksum, stuff like that. Um, and we'll go farther into that. Another interesting thing you have here is diddle blocks, so replicated metadata, so it can rebuild itself if like, the metadata gets corrupt. Like I said, we'll go further into that. You got snapshotting. Um, so you can, the cool thing with ZFS, I, mean, I won't cover this, this is a more advanced topic with ZFS, but you can send snapshots over the internet. So you can snapshot something and then send it to a machine halfway across the, halfway across the world and they can rebuild everything. It's pretty crazy. Um, you have rollbacks. Um, I saw an interesting uh, port where someone was using ZFS as like the foundation for like uh, reverting back when you get like infected with like botnet and stuff like that. And it showed that like, kind of like a, they used it in the way you would a, a virtual file. Um, like a VM, so like virtual box or VMware, where if you get infected, you just revert back to a previous instance and then you're not infected anymore. So they used that idea with ZFS rollbacks and it worked uh, tremendously well. And then you got uh, ZFS quotas, so that's just like limiting the amount of space that like a user or group or disk can use. Okay, so this is how ZFS works, it's uh, different than other file systems, and I stole this directly from Scale. So uh, their talk is amazing. If you find ZFS interesting, watch that talk. It's from the ZFS developers. They're incredible. So to break it down, basically, you have the spa at the bottom. And this ZFS is designed to be arrayed, basically. Um, so if you have several disks, and they have something called a Z-RAID where you're able to rebuild like broken areas and inodes with other disks. Um, so basically what the spa does is it plays like five disks. So they'll take those five disks and make that as a pool, a storage pool. And then here in the middle, the DMU, they took the idea of like databases and it, it says I either wrote this or I didn't. Is it free? And it shows like when process is complete. So it, it makes it so like if you pull out a disk or a power drops or something like that, it's able to tell what happened at what time, so it's able to rebuild things. And then at the top you have uh, the ZFL, which is the POSIX layer. So POSIX is like an old uh, Unix term. Um, so basically what that does is that's the file interface. So that's the top. And um, with CFS you have a Z pool. And the Z pool um, is basically I don't know who's familiar with uh, LVM. Uh, the Z pool basically is the virtual um, virtual layer. I'll go into that further, but um, basically you make the Z pool, the virtual layer, and then the ZFS lays on top of that. I'll go into that further. So, so this is kind of breaking down an overview of um, what I just said. Uh, an interesting thing with uh, the spot actually gets assigned. It's it creates a block pointer and assigns like tokens to that block pointer. So different acronyms to get ZFS. Uh, data sets are just the mount points. Um, Z-Vaults are the block devices. 
Pitta blocks, right? And Dinda, the name you can see there. So these are pretty common terms. You can get, like I said, you can get my slides. So I'm going to try to speed this up because I got 94 slides. So <laughs> all right. So there are seven different seven different types of VDEVs, which is like I said, the virtual devices. You make this, you file, mirror, array, spare, cache, or log. So these are the different kinds of assignments that you can give the disks with ZFS and EDOS. So the most interesting thing about ZFS is, is a self-healing file system. More so with ways where um, you're able to rebuild them from other disks, but it's, I'll go further into it later, um, but that's the most interesting aspect of it. So here's why. So ZFS has something called Merkle trees. So the ZFS, which is hash summing, all the way down, I'll show you a picture next, all the way down the tree, um, it verifies the integrity, all the way down to, all the way down and up, all the way to the Uber block, which is at the very top of the file tree. So, like this is regular blocks, like uh, LVM, DXT4 and stuff like that, where you have checksums. But unlike that, ZFS all the way up the trees, all the way to the Uber block, which would be up here, everything is hash sum. And whenever you change data down here, all these checksums get changed. So that, say, this one here gets corrupt, it can be repaired with one piece to here. Isn't that basically blockchain? What's that? Uh, I'm, I'm not too familiar with crypto. Yeah, so uh, ZFS has been around since the since the late 80s, early 90s. Really? Yeah. SunOS 5.3 is the native file system. There's a lot of development. Like during when I was writing this talk, they added like six new features. Um, so this goes more into like uh, the Merkle tree and uh, what it does. So. I think it's mis uh, misdirected writes. Uh, um, all metadata is stored twice. And I'll go further into this. You can actually create several copies. Um, I'll go further into that here. So, so the next uh, kind of term I want to bring up is ZFS uses copy and write. So does BGFS, which is the next file system I'll be covering. So the idea of copy and write is that instead of replacing um, replacing the, the block, what it does is it copies the block, and in that copy, it, it changes, the, it adds the write and overwrites it. Instead of over, overwriting that block, and then say the power goes out, or you have, you know, you restrict your write and stuff like that, it makes it so that you never have to FSCK the disk. So, goes over what I just said here. So basically, the data is either, is either written or it isn't, to make it simple. And then if the, if the disk changes, if the disk crashes, it's either written or it isn't. Um, and then if it isn't, nothing's changed. OK, so next thing I want to cover here is the black point. So normally they have four gigabyte blocks. ZFS uses 128, and it minimizes the fragmentation. Another interesting thing about the block is it shows like when it's written, and then the 250, uh, 56 uh, SHA checksum is in the block as well. There. Um, and then there are three copies of data. We'll see here. So this is the block here. So you have the first copy data here, and this is the metadata, and then the pool wide metadata. So like I said um, before, like if you look here, that would be the pool wide right there. 
So, and then you got the checksum at the bottom here, and then where it was written right here. Okay, so next part is a little bit easier. Um, so these are the different attributes. CFS, once you get it installed, recompiled, and it's up and running, have it, you've decided to be dev, it gets very, very simple and straightforward. So these are the different attributes that you can apply to. So you can make multiple copies, so that if one copy gets corrupted, you can rebuild it with another copy. You can turn off or on the execution of that assignment. So if you're like, I want, I want to assign this folder execution rights or non-execution rights, you can do that. You can create overlays. Um, Vscan is the virus scan. Um, again, this is like BSD based. So, and then you have extended attributes, and then zone, which is another BSD term. So you have um, compression uh, of folders or disks, and then you go to context here, which is like SE Linux. So you can define users, group, roles, types, stuff like that. Then you can do limit the amount of space that a disk or folder can have, or you can turn it to read, read only. And then you have the different caches here. I won't be covering bad caches, and raids or in logs um, won't be covered in this, just because I'm covering way too much. I didn't have enough time to describe all that stuff here. And then you have uh, different ACLs. So, O6 um, ACLs, um, and then the different kinds of checksums you can use here. Um, 256 is, is really all you would need. You can go up to 512, though. Um, I believe they just cracked. Uh, not the, I guess, this is just for disks, but um, 256 and SHG, you know, error 512 are still safe. Most of the all right, so these are the different options. So this is tab to tab completion with uh, um, Linux. I'm using Parrot Linux, by the way, if anyone is interested. Um, so this is tab completion. So I go CFS, get, and these are the different options that you can choose from to get. So I want to get the attributes of any of these options, and then it will I'll show those more screenshots of that. So then you go to uh, ZFS set. And it really is this simple. Once you install it and you assign the VDEV and stuff like that, ZFS is incredibly easy to use. Alright, so ZFS is, like I said, designed to be grade centric. So the first thing you have to do with ZFS is import the pool. Zpool import. So you have two different interfaces, Zpool, which just deals with the, the VDEV, and then you have ZFS, which deals with the actual the disk and the partition and stuff like that. So really Zpool, you have import, export, and that's really all you would need to know when it comes to Zpool. Alright, so list different attributes. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but you have like the amount used. Um, if the amount used, you have the ACLs, um, whether it's inherited, is it zone, is it, is it zone, does it have extended attributes, the number of copies, you see like here there's two copies, um, the, is it checksum, what kind of checksum is it, is it compressed, and read only, and there's a lot of different options, but that just kind of summarizes the different ways you can list those. Yeah. Uh, CFS features and attributes of disks. So now we're going to uh, Z the ZFS command. So we're you know, we're um, asking the partition like different attributes. So get um, get send an attribute property is the value on or is it off? The source is it inherited or is it is it inherited or not? So is it inherited down? You know, like subdirectories and stuff like that. 
Okay, so like I said, it's pretty self-explanatory. You either get the attribute, and then you can say the pool. So I named the pool zpool dash dfs. And then you have the folder. So I, I'm asking, I'm setting this attribute, send the attribute off on this folder of this pool. So and then here I'm, I'm getting that attribute. And I just said get attribute of every folder. So these are all the different folders. These are the, the pool, these are the folders, that's the property and the value. And whether it's inherited or not. So then you got compression. Um, is the compression on or off? What kind of compression is it? Then uh, whether <coughs> whether that folder is executable, executable or not. So I use scripts because, you know, I pull things from GitHub sometimes without knowing, actually going through the code and stuff like that. So you want to turn executable off because maybe you pull something that's self-executable and, you know, you don't want that to happen. So now uh, read-only. So self-explanatory, like I said. Um, Pretty simple. Set the read-only property to this word list, like password list and stuff like that. So uh, the set UID. So basically, with Linux, you have users, groups, and others. You don't want the set UID bit set because then people from the you know internet can access that data. So you want to turn off. Uh, the set UID bit, because then that's just a security precaution. Whether it's zoned, like I said, this is a BSD term. Um, you got the checksums, checksum, uh, the value, so what kind of checksum are you using? I just use SHA-256 as just standard. The amount of copies. So as you can see here, I'll set two copies for that. You got a vScan. Um, as you can see there, the value's on for that folder, which is script. New duplication, new duplication. Um, there's a trade-off for deduplication. It's better to use copies then deduplication. So these are the different commands, the list of all the commands um, that I used. Did anyone have any questions on ZFS before I move forward? What's up? What kind of, uh, when you were doing your, when you, you set compression, what kind of performance did you see with compression and with deduplication? Um, in terms of like raw IO or like large block, right? There's there's a really good blog. Um, give it to you later. The cool. Went I'm really deep that. into it. The duplication we found just wasn't work um, in the end. Um, I think they use LTO for compression uh, by default. Um, Could buggy after this? And yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really good. It's a 23, 23 part block, and it goes. Really in depth in ZFS. Okay, so VGFS. There are uh, the different videos. Everything is covered. And as you can see at the bottom, VGFS notes. I, I wrote a really good cheat sheet with that. All the syntax describing everything I did. It's on the corner on the side. So the different features. Um, I don't know how well that is. That way you guys can see that. Um, so this is from the VTreeFS uh, site. <coughs> okay, so the thing that I found most interesting with VTreeFS is that it generates um, checksums for both the data and the metadata blocks. Um, fault isolation, so metadata is stored separately from user data. We have copy on write, um, copy on write, 
the feature FS by default. Um, yes. All right, so uh, MKFS is make file system. So that's the command there to make a file system. You see the data, it's a single. Um, FeatureFS also is designed, is designed for grades. So I'm defining here that I want a single device. Uh, the metadata is single as well. Uh, what I want to name the label, so I'm just going to name it FeatureFS. And then dev STC is the physical device that I'm formatting. And that's the output from the format. So, uh, FeatureFS is kind of limited in the features. When you compare that to ZFS, ZFS just has so many features. Um, so you have compression, you make it read-only. Um, um, they also have uh, sub-volumes. So you can make, uh, this is uh, FeatureFS, create a sub-volume, and then that's the name of the sub-volume that I'm creating. So you can see the output, and then I'm saying, lists all the files in this directory, and that's the sub volume there, which created that folder. Alright, so now we're making a snapshot of the sub volume. So that's the command there. So that's the snapshot folder, and that's the sub volume, and, and instead of creating the sub volume, and then I'm listing those folders. Now I'm creating a read-only snapshot at this folder here, and that's the folder that I'm making the snapshot of there, the PGFS test. Dash R is the um, CF, uh, syntax for read-only. Okay, so this is the usage of um, that PGFS, and like I said, this is a single disk. So you got the size, the allocation, um, ratio, stuff like this. All right, so just uh, another kind of usage and kind of command. Um, all right, and another one, uh, DF is just the uh, usage. So it's more statistics for the file system and the amount used. Um, as you can see, they're single disks, not rated. All right, so now we're going to be covering what I think is the most interesting aspect of FeatureFS is the fact that you can dump the superblock. Um, so you, you print the superblock information, all, all those different statistics, the uh, copies, chunk array. Uh, so there I'm dumping it. And when you dump it, you can use, and I'll go into this next uh, FeatureFS check, and define this is the super block that I want to um, use. So you can back it up and then kind of uh, uh, essentially. So um, there are the different um, super block areas the BGFX uses, the super block size. And the last one there is the command we use to copy the super block. So that you would put the super blocks in node there, which is the super block. All right, here we're dumping uh, trees, so just kind of um, different attributes of the disk. What's more interesting, you know, raids. Like I said, it's just a single, single device. So. So we'll dump the tree, trust, tree structures, um, extent, and device trees in there. Um, inconsistencies and file system structure offsets. So um, here you're printing the size and statistics of the tree. Um, here you're showing a listing. <coughs> property and then here you're mounting it with compression LZO. So that's the mount command. O is just the you, you would define um, different properties of when you're mounting it. Uh, that's the block device. That's the 
distribution. So there, that's the folder you're mounting at. That's the disk name. That's the raw disk. So I don't know how many are uh, familiar with Linux, but devices are stored in the dev directory. And we start with SDA, SDB, SDC is what I use. So that's the third disk. Um, here I'm creating the uh, btrfs directory, the main directory, and and so then once this command finishes, then I'm going to run this command, so it's mounting, and here I'm backing up to two folders, and then here I'm listing that directory. All right, now you have di the different checks. So btrfs ck is uh, a different binary they created for specifically for checking FS disks, then I'm saying uh, show the progress. Okay. So these are the different things that it checks when you run the feature FS check. So reference accounts, back references, using windows, activity, etc. Alright, so this is preparing the disk and the output. And again, you can define the super block. So if a uh, soup block is bad, just find it there and basically um, restore it. It's damaged. Um, I haven't posted the XFS stuff yet. Does anyone have any questions about BGFS before I go to XFS? Okay, so we are mounting the XFS. We have the mount command. T dash T is type. So I want to do XFS type. The, um, the raw disk is a dev SDP, so that's going to be the fourth disk. And then the directory that I'm mounting, so I use a directory called mount slash xfs, and then I'm going to mount that as rewrite. And then the second one, second one was unmounting it. So that's kind of a joke with. A joke with Linux is you mount instead of you end mount, you know what I mean? Okay, so they leave out the and just did it. Okay, so um, the most interesting interesting thing about XFS right now is that you can back up the metadata. So you can back it up, which metadata, I think I, I use like a 500 gigabyte disk. When I backed up the metadata, it was about 300 megabytes. So you can back up the metadata and if it becomes corrupt, you can restore the metadata and it fixes the disk. So, set that as dump, file. So I'm backing it up to a file called XFS backup, at home, and my name, that directory. So that's the file I'm creating. And then this is the directory I used uh, Zulu mount. So Zulu mount mouse disks at this location. So that's going to be different depending on what you use to mount. Um, but that's the mount directory of the disk. And I got a video, the video URL is right there. Showing everything I did in real time. So this is the second part of that. So um, we're going to enter the label, we can call it, we can call it backup. And it goes through and backs up all the metadata to the file. And this is XFS restore. So I'm going to restore the metadata. This is being corrupt. Um, here I'm defining, uh, I want to be, I want to verbosely do this through trace is the most verbose um, option. And I'm going to be uh, using that file, the one that I packed up right there. And that's the disk that I'm using. Restore it. That's the output. Alright, so now on to different tools. This is just kind of extra. How much time do I have left here? Um, 15 minutes, so that's a half hour. Uh, the tools that I'll cover um, Smart CTL will show you like smart data from your disk, HD Farm will show a lot of like hidden features in disks. Um, 
Let's go down the rabbit hole with that. So I, I recently read a forensics book where um, this guy found there's two different ways they can do this, but hardware manufacturers are actually creating a hidden partition firmware, and they are backing up metadata to that, so a very, very small amount of data is being um, saved, and then they're actually transmitting it back to the hardware manufacturer um, so they can collect people's metadata. So HG Farm will show those features, and so it's a very, very in-depth thing. You can you can break up a device doing that, but it's kind of, like I said, rabbit hole with HG Farm. HG Temp is going to show the temperature reading of your disk. Um, these all are just kind of like keep listing disks. Um, interesting feature with SF disk is you can. Um, back up uh, the MBR and replace it if you screw up, you can actually write over it or something like that. Um, FSCK, uh, fix the disk when it becomes corrupt. All right, so this is the command line version of Smart CTO. So first one here, I dash A is all features. Um, and I'm grouping, so this is a uh, you're finding this string here, smart support. So I'm asking, uh, is it available? And is it enabled or disabled? So it's currently disabled at this point here. And then the second one here, I'm saying dash S is smart support. So I'm saying turn that feature on for the first disk. So SDA is going to be the very first disk. And then you see at the very bottom, Smart support is now closed. All right, so this is smart support. Uh, smart CTL X all is just going to show all the different smart features. So you have serial number, you have uh, the run <coughs> WM is for network file systems. So disks are going to be allocated uh, device IDs for um, finding each other with iSCSI, so now network devices. So you got firmware port version, capabilities, sector sizes, rotation, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the graphical version of Smart CTM, G Smart Control. So it literally is the exact same thing except for it's a GUI. So if you see here, it's the exact same thing as what that was saying. Just add the so you can save, um, save the report there. So this is more output. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of output. All right, HG Farm. There is a lot of very refined information with HG Farm. So first things that come to uh, come up or um, logical and physical sector size. So 112 and 4096. So I'm going to go through three different pages that, that it's going to print out here. Um, coming up here, you have enable different options that hard, uh, that hard drive is going to support. And then it's enabled, let's start next with. So these are more options that um, the hard drive supports or doesn't. All right, and then um, you can freeze your hard drive, set passwords to confirm the firmware of it. Um, it's not frozen, it doesn't have master passwords before it's enabled. And then you have the WWM, like I said before, is a network file system. Identifier. Okay. All right. So farm here. <coughs> this is the geometry of this disk. So sectors. All right. So you can do this with uh, block dev as well. Um, HD farm. That particular block device is an SD card. So that's what that is called. Usually, like I said, it's SDA1, SDA2, 
too. But uh, SD cards start with that, that name in this game. So here um, I'm asking, is this read only? Uh, it is read only. Off. Zero is off. One is off. So pick the SD card if you read only or not. Alright, so these are different just mounting options. Um, U disk CTL, mount device, SDB, so it's the second disk. <coughs> and then U2, uh, ISO 9660 is the CD or DVD, where you can also name it ISO flow. So use uh, this file and this, uh, this folder. Loop it so make it a uh, virtual instance uh, um, and zoom loop is a uh, zoom mount is another GUI mounting program. I like it, it's very um, it forces things very well so you know that like versus gnome mount and stuff like that, they don't have very forceful, whereas like Zulu now is um, through super user, so you know that it's um, not going to screw up as much as like GNOME disks, or not you know, failures with GNOME disks that have a Zulu now. HD farm, so um, here I'm asking, uh, what's the temperature of the very first disk, SDA, and that is you can also turn it to uh, granite if you do dash dash unit uh, equals capital F, it'll do granite. Um, F disk, so I'm listing the disks. So um, SDA, that's the first disk, and different partitions here, and sectors, and type. So um, LVM, so this is an encrypted LVM, so um, LVM is going to have three different partitions, um, especially like encrypted, so um, it's an outer loop, so that's the, the disk there, and then the swap is four partitions, the swap wall. Um, here I'm asking logical, physical, in two different ways. So the sys is a subdirectory, it's a virtual subdirectory, block, SDA is the first disk. What is the physical block size? Physical block size. And here using uh, block div, you're saying get physical block size of the first directory and get the second uh, uh, physical and logical. Um, LSPOP, just another um, listing of devices or disks and such. And the topology of the disk is LSPOP. Alright, and then the last thing I'll cover here is um, fixing disks when they become corrupt. SDK. So, very simple, you just SDK, dev, and then with disk. Usually that would be as and that's what it'll do. It'll go through and clean it. Alright, so that's the end. Um, I might do a part two. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, next year, so. Alright, any questions? Alright, again, you can uh, have video tutorials at uh, YouTube, Archive, and BitChute, just find me under uh, Zelfis, XD1PHIX. Thank you very much.